Hey, what's going on? All right, so <clears throat> I actually get a lot of questions about this. And now that I think about it, I'm a very blessed individual. But this video, let's talk about how to pick a horn. Right? That's pretty tough. So let me frame it in for you. I live in a place called Western New York, so not New York City. And while we are not uh, completely rural, it's kind of rural out here uh, by way of comparing it to a big city. So that being said, my point is I don't have more than two music instrument dealers, like band instrument dealers out this way. Uh, and none of them have a very wide selection. They have, you know, Bach, Yamaha, Jupiter, things like that. They're not going to have this wide array of hundreds of horns I can go try. Like if I were to go to New York City and see Jay Landers Brass or out in Kansas City and see uh, like Austin Custom Brass, for example, and, and, you know, see what those guys have in their shops is just outstanding. But so my point is, how do you pick a horn when you can't play it? And, and playing these things is, man, it's so important. I mean, you could say that about any uh, tangible instrument like guitar or bass or you know, even piano for that matter. The key weight will have a lot to do with how it plays for you. Uh, and these things are all extremely personal decisions, right? Like, so what's right for me or what I really like may not at all be what you like uh, or what works for you. And even more complex is that you might love the thing, but it's just not what you play the best. Um, and I found that a lot to be true. So let me just quickly give you like how I've done this over the over the years. And I think that's important to call it out as years because this has not been a simple process for me. I have not had the luxury of being able to go to like ITG or fly out to some, you know, even down to New York City and hang out for a day with Jay Landers Brass. And I'd love to do that. Uh, just go down to that shop and make an appointment or however that works and go in there and just play through their arsenal of horns that they have and just try all these different brands that I've never, never played before. Um, but at the same time, I kind of balance like, am I really that level of player that that's really necessary? So what I've done is I've, I've used the method of kind of recycling. Um, I think it's, it should be stated that uh, all the horns that you, you know, for the most part, that you see me play without the exceptions where I say this is a brand new horn I just bought, everything I have is used. Uh, and I think that's a really good thing to call out in that there are wonderful, wonderful horns out there that are, you know, 50 plus years old that are still outstanding or have the potential to be outstanding with, uh, you know, sending it out to a repair shop like Jay Landers Brass or Austin Custom Brass, these places that do valve work, brass work, they can get it really right back where you want it to be or where it was when it was brand new or in some custom way. Like I have a, uh, I have, let me, uh, let me grab a horn. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Harder to get out of the case than you, you would imagine, right? So I have this uh, 1971 Alan Rubin uh, Quino flugelhorn. What a beauty, right? And I got this from Jay Landris. Um, and I had them do like a scratched finish. I had them put this smaller ring and I had it moved back. But I mean, you know, it, it's been recorked. It's a beautiful, I mean, it, it's a wonderful horn. And you hear this bad boy on almost everything that I record. This is a great horn. Um, and I think this was about $1,700, $1,800 for this horn. Um, now that's not really cheap. I would imagine for even me, that's that's not, you know, I don't have that in my wallet right now, let's say. Um, you know, but for a brass instrument, that's, you know, I mean, if, if I want to look at, uh, for example, off camera again, my Shilke 1041, this thing brand new is like $3,100, $3,200. Um, and again, I got this used as well from Jay Landers Brass. Uh, if you if you kind of get in my point here, I do a lot of stuff uh, with Jay Landris because they're reputable Good bunch of dudes over there. Uh, just a good good overall experience I've had with them. Uh, fair pricing, you know, they're, they're honest, that kind of thing. Same with uh, Austin Custom Brass, really good guys over there as well. Um, and I bought a lot of stuff from them too. So I guess back to my point is that what I have done is purchased horns, taken a gamble, and been like, you know, I mean, how do you go wrong with a Queen on? That's like supposedly the, you know, the, the benchmark for a flugel, let's say, if you're going for a flugel. And for me, 16 to you know, let's say under 2000 is, is, is a budget range for me. And, and again, I'm not trying to insult anyone that, that may not in any way be your budget. But, you know, for brass instruments, if you're looking for a pro level horn, even on the used market, that's kind of where you're at. 
uh, somewhere around there. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about the, the more affordable horns, like the Toman and some of the other ones that I have, and they are great horns. They play really well. They don't feel the same, and, and that to me is, you know, maybe that's a bit snobbish, but they really don't feel the same. Uh, and for whatever reason, that means something. Um, to me, it may not mean anything to you. So you may be able to pick up a $400 horn and be totally satisfied with it. For me, unfortunately, uh, while I can be satisfied with its playability and tone, they, they really, there is some feel about that level of horn that is just not the same as a pro level horn from these custom makers or builders. Uh, but my point is I bought these horns with the intention of playing them for a bit and seeing if it's right for me and if it's not, selling it. And you know, a site like Reverb.com is great for that. Um, I've kind of stayed away from eBay. Their selling fees and some of their model that they have now is not very seller friendly, especially for high-end items like this. Um, but reverb is still pretty good. So there's that. And I've also traded instruments in uh, with companies like Jay Landers Press. I mean, I keep going back to that place, but they're they're amazing to deal with. Um, and you know that whatever you're getting from them has been gone through and gone over by professionals. And they're not selling you a piece of junk. So I've taken some risks on eBay and reverb and buying horns, and I've had really good luck. Uh, but the staples in my uh, shed, so to speak, uh, have all come from uh, either Jay Landris uh, Brass or <laughs> Austin Custom Brass, or I've had some horns custom built for me, so they've come direct from the builder themselves. But <clears throat> generally speaking, that's how I've approached it. And the horns that I haven't uh, enjoyed or were not right for me, I've just put them up and sold them. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm talking over a, a, a multi-year process here. This is not something that um, you know, I bought 10 horns and tried them all. I bought one, played it for a while, like six to eight months at least to really give it a, a shot. Unless when I picked it up, I just knew it it wasn't for me. Uh, but that only happened one time where it was just like, wow, this is not like ergonomically, it didn't fit my hand and it just it was uncomfortable to play and I couldn't get past the distraction of that. Um, and actually I had the, the Quino reworked for that exact reason because it's, you know, I complained about this and mentioned it before, but my thumb doesn't fit in here the way I would like it because the, see how the, the, this is very much like a trumpet. It's kicked back. There's a degree going backwards. And when I put my thumb in there, it, it doesn't, it doesn't fit right, the way I like it. And the way that the original pinky ring was, it was kind of up here more. Right, so I, I had it changed. So now it's went much, much more comfortable. But this horn is, man, this thing is, with especially with a few flugel, if we stick with that, like there's a definite, you know, how you hold this, you know, I guess that's true of trumpet too. But for me, you know, th there's a lot to be said for the, the wrap and the hold. And I particularly like these really small sized flugel horns, um, as opposed to like I have this one that's just way bigger. It is such a cool horn. This is like a, a Getzen Blessing kind of hybrid thing. And again, I <laughs> sent this off to Jay Landris and had all these rings done on it, had the finish, uh, you know, scratched off on it. But if you notice, this has the, the traditional trumpet block on it where the valves are horizontal, not vertical. Um, you know, but even on this, like depending on how you hold, there's a lot of, you know, trying to get the right wrap and the right hold on these things. But this is a really cool trumpet as well. Um, that was a pretty affordable horn, so I'm not too con too disappointed that it sounds, it, it's very pitchy, it's a difficult horn to play, um, but it just, it looks so cool. So some of the ones that I've kept that were affordable, and I didn't think had much of a retail resale value because I customized them and, and you know, I'm not going to sell somebody a horn that, that doesn't play in tune unless you're really kind of skilled with it. Um, so I just kept some of these just around for fun and I, I like having them in the in the studio with me um like with all my other stuff like a whole bunch of guitars and stuff like that and you know i play one but i have a whole an assortment i anyway i digress my point is that's kind of how this works if you don't have the ability to go try these things out in your local area uh and you know the the, the important takeaway is that it works well um you know i have the horns in my possession and i've definitely cycled through probably 30 at least 30 horns. Um, and the same could be true for mouthpieces. Just multiply that by like five. <laughs> and most of which I still have because it's fun to just stick a new 
piece in there and change the tone completely and have like a whole new horn just based on the mouthpiece selection. Uh, or depending on what you're recording, like for example, I use that Sound Fresh Sound Freak mouthpiece a lot because it works really well on the lo-fi jazz hop hip hop stuff that I uh, record and play on. So it, it's a really good mouthpiece for that. It's not really a great mouthpiece for anything else that I found. It doesn't have a big, fat, mellow, sweet sound. It's got a real gritty, airy, kind of raspy sound that really just works well in that. So that's also something to consider um, when you're doing this. But yeah, my advice really is, is just go out there and, and try something that you, th you think would, would like and, you know, reach out to people. I'm happy to talk to anybody, and, and I, this is where this video came from. Someone reached out and asked my thoughts on this, and, you know, I sent back this long dissertation on all my thoughts, so I'm like, wow, I bet other people have that same interest as well from just a regular dude like me that's not some pro that has access to, you know, $50,000 horns and people giving them equipment and all that stuff. I mean, that's not who I am. Uh, I'm just a regular dude. I'm, I'm a software engineer, uh, engineering manager by trade. So that's what I do. Uh, but I love doing music and playing trumpet and horns and stuff like that on the side. So I don't have this crazy unlimited budget or I don't get sponsored or I don't get free stuff from anybody to try. I've bought all of these things. Uh, so that's probably a lot like you. We're hobbyists. We have passion for music and we enjoy doing this, but we also want to play really good stuff too. And in the end, it comes down to what works best for you more than anything else. So you might love a brand, like I love Fender Stratocasters, and I've said this, but I can't play that particular setup of guitar. So I have to play the uh, Gibson Les Paul, or in, in my case, an Epiphone Les Paul, or an Epiphone SG. Those are Gretsch. Those type of guitars are more suited for whatever, ergonomically, how I play the guitar. Um, disappointingly, I really want it to be a Fender Strat, but I can't play that. Um, so in a lot of cases, it, it really comes down to what works best for you uh, and just, you know, embracing that and, and it is what it is. So if a $400, $500 horn works for you, that's awesome. Let it rip, man. But if you, you know, want to look at some of these pro level models, unfortunately, you're going to have to try them because the fact that I love a Quino or a Shilke uh, doesn't mean you will. It just means it works best or you know, from what I've played, it works great. Now, look, I haven't played like an AR Resonance. Would love to try those out. Um, you know, there's some Van Lahr stuff I've seen that looks amazing. The Clanghorn stuff looks awesome. Of course, Adams. I mean, there's so many out there. Like I have a, uh, I talk about it all the time, the Brass Fire uh, trumpets that I have. I, they're amazing. I love them. They make a flugelhorn. I don't have that. You know, it's so there's just that want list. And, and to me, I kind of look at it now as like, that's a really good thing because I like that there's always something else out there to kind of take a look at rather than being discouraged by, holy cow, there's all these things to look at. I think it's really motivational and positive to always be like, hey, there's something else I could try if I get bored or stale of whatever I've got now, I can go try another horn uh, and, and add one to the, to the, you know, to the stable, so to speak, uh, and give it a shot. Or maybe I happen to be somewhere and I can stop in a horn. Like one of the companies I work for now is in New York City. So I'll be traveling there at some point. And when I do, I'll be sure to stop into Jay Landers Brass and check out what they've got on hand. Uh, and they always have these crazy, uh, like Del Quadro stuff. They have all kinds of weird stuff that you don't normally see uh, anywhere, right? They're, they've got that. Uh, and again, like I got the, uh, the Alan Rubin flugelhorn. I mean, and they, right now they have the Dizzy Gillespie collection. I mean, the craziest stuff comes into that uh, that shop. So it would be interesting to go, to go out there and try that stuff out. But uh, I like that. I've chosen to, instead of see that as a negative, see that as a positive or something to aspire or look forward to. Or, you know, hey, there's something else out there. And maybe I'll try that at some point. But, uh, you know, in the end, I'm a hobbyist. So I'm very blessed to have all the stuff that I just rattled off. I mean, it's a lot of money worth of horns, uh, probably far beyond what I would need to do what I do. But, you know, I mean, get out there and try some stuff and, and give it a shot. I mean, you know, you only live once, right? And you, you might as well take an, take an opportunity and, and try to get what you like and, and don't sell yourself short because truthfully, if you don't get the right thing, you can always get rid of it. But in the end, if you continue to play on something that's not really optimal for you, it'll kind of degrade your playing experience overall. So I look at it as, hey man, if you've got the, uh, the, you know, the desire to do this, go out there and make it all that it can be for you. So, I don't know, hopefully this longer video helped out and, uh, you know, uh, you get what you're looking for out there. But if you want to reach out individually, that's great too. 
I'm online all the time, so I'm, I'm happy to respond to people uh, via instant message and text and things like that. So hope this helped.